Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, thank you for the gift of baptism and water and for your son, Jesus, who is the living bread of heaven. Sustain us with water and with the living bread as we move forward in our weeks. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I'm going to invite the young and the young at heart up here while I fix my mic. So my friends who were in VBS this week, if you want to come and sit, please join me so I'm not alone up here. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just Anne Alexis preaching in the middle of the altar. <laughs> It is so wonderful, whoa, look at that. It is so wonderful to see all of you this morning. Did we have a fantastic week? Woo! I'm gonna thank all of you so much for a wonderful week at VBS to the staff, to the volunteers, but probably most importantly to all of our children who came to the table this week with us. You have nourished and sustained me, and you truly feasted on the living bread that came down from heaven. Mm. And to Gavin, thank you for sharing your baptism with us today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story. I think God likes to hear our stories. <laughs> I think he does. While I was at my parents' house last week, I got really bored. Even though they have a puppy, I still got bored. The puppy was biting. I had had enough. And I was digging through some of my old baby stuff and some of their old photo albums, and I found this ancient artifact. Does anybody want to guess what this is? It is a bulletin. It's very 90s. That's because this bulletin is from July 13, 1997. That is the day that I was baptized. Huh. Oddly enough, the readings were from... Track two, year B, we read them in July. So I got to reflect a little bit. It was pretty cool to see. And it got me thinking about baptism. This leaflet and this member of Christ's flock are officially 24 years, one month, and two days old. God's sustaining love for us has lasted more than 24 years, luckily for us. But for me, it's lasted 24 years, one month, and two days. What I love so much about today is that we saw, wel we saw someone welcomed into Christ's flock. Gavin asked to join Christ's pastor, and he was baptized. I always get weepy at baptism. Always, 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 always. I cried today. That's why I wore waterproof mascara. <laughs> I get weepy because I am reminded of this unbelievable, crazy, unending love that God has for us. In baptism, we are reminded of the covenant or this promise that we make with God. Through Jesus... God's love was so powerful that nothing, nothing can separate God from us. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. If your mom gets mad at you because you broke the vase that she loves so much, God still loves you. Your mom might be mad. Your mom might be really mad, but God still loves you. And it all begins with baptism. But then today, we get to make this really cool connection from baptism to the scriptures. In the gospel, Jesus makes a really special promise to us. If we feast on him, if we welcome Jesus into our lives, we will never, ever be alone. We will always feel loved. We will always feel connected to God. We will live forever. 
if we take communion, if we invite Jesus into our lives, if we pray, we will be connected to God forever. Isn't that, oh, jeez. Isn't that so cool? Yeah. That is Jesus showing us that he really is love, like we learned this week, right guys? We are welcomed into the body of Christ through baptism, which is God's unbounding love, and then we stay in it through Eucharist and prayer. And I learned that nobody seems to understand that more than children. They are the heirs of the kingdom of heaven, as you may see here. On Tuesday, Reverend Carroll fantastically told the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Now, friends, I gave... Reverend Carroll, the challenge of telling this story to three separate audiences, our four and five-year-olds, our six to eight-year-olds, and our nine to 11-year-olds. And why Carroll didn't just walk away from me <laughs> right on the spot is actually quite beyond me, but I'm so glad she didn't. It worked out beautifully in the end. Our youngest bunch took the story to heart. One of the activities with this story was a relay race with Cheerios to demonstrate the feeding of the 5,000. <laughs> and now four-year-olds, being who they are, wanted to have a snack after the story. <laughs> and frankly, I would too, I like Cheerios. So when they were done, they wanted to have a snack, and Reverend Carroll gave them each some Cheerios, but instead of feeding themselves first, they started feeding each other the living bread that came down from heaven was clear with our four and five-year-olds. They listened, they participated well, but the spirit took over. And you'll notice, behind me, we have this very colorful, not Pentecostal green, pulpit frontal. Do you friends remember what that was? Pierce, what was it? It was, a prayer it was a prayer chain. I like to think that this is how God sees our prayers. Colorful, polka dotted, stripy. <laughs> and this is how God responds to our prayers. God absorbs them. God thinks about them. And God just holds them so close to God's heart. Can I share with you guys some of the prayers that our children, okay. One of our friends prayed, I want everybody to know that black lives matter. One of our friends prayed, God, help me to be a better person. And one prayer in big scratchy preschool handwriting purple crayon just said, God. Straightforward, it gets to the point. <laughs> the context for this activity was in response to John 14, 27, Jesus saying to his followers, peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. We told our kids that things are a little scary right now with the pandemic, and it's okay to be afraid, but God's love and God's peace are so much stronger than our fears. So the kids wrote down their prayers, their love, everything they wanted God to know. And clearly, everything they had learned through the week resonated with them. I don't know, I, I think you guys made some important connections to God, and that fills my heart. Jesus' love through God's peace brings up the most pure, deeply rooted needs in all of us. But the thing is, children are honest about these needs. I think we learned that this week. Connecting to God with no reservations, children feast on the bread of heaven and live into their baptisms. There is a reason that we hear Jesus say in three gospels, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom belongs to them. 
Jesus offers his love for us unconditionally with complete grace. But the people who most willingly accept these love are children. Accept this love, are children. Open, curious, accepting, gentle, and so free with their own love. Today, we watched Gavin receive the sacrament of baptism. Jarrett asked us a series of questions called the baptismal covenant. And the covenant calls on us to be the most faithful versions of ourselves. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbors as yourselves? This is the second to last question in the covenant. And it's just a fancy, churchy way of saying, will you look for and accept the love of Jesus in everyone, no matter what, and love that person, no matter what. And it can be hard to do, right, friends? It can be really hard to do. You get in a fight with your best friend. Your best friend stole your favorite pencil. That, that, that makes me mad. Reverend Barb, she stole my favorite pen. I'm so mad at Barb. Where did my pen go? I'm not interested in speaking to Barb for the rest of the day. The thing is, we get caught up in our own stuff, that sometimes we look into a person's eyes and fail to see Jesus looking back at us. This week, though, I have witnessed our most vulnerable population see Jesus in everyone. They did. They saw Christ in everybody and loved everybody. Gavin choosing to receive the sacrament of baptism and through the pure light and love of children, they are seeking and serving Christ in all persons. Jesus is the living bread which came down from heaven, the most nourishing and sustaining of meals which connects us to God. Now, don't get me wrong, I've had plenty of nourishing meals in my day. My mom's spaghetti is something to die for. <laughs> but nothing comes close to Jesus. Amen. We must learn from our children. We have to learn from all of you guys because I think you are a heck of a lot smarter than I am. If we want to truly feast on this heavenly banquet. But as we say in the covenant, I will with God's help. And that's the beauty of all of it. We are never alone. Now, this is normally where I would drop the amen. <laughs> but I know if I do that, I'll lose all of you. So I need to acknowledge all of the people who made this week so great. So just bear with me for a moment. Adam, who was filling in for James, our sexton, has been marvelous. He lugged water. He cleaned up, he filled paper towels, he ran around. To all of our youth guides who shepherded children from activity to activity, and it was hot. Whew. To all of the volunteers who led activities, shepherded kids, or helped in the kitchen, especially to Debbie Schaff who led bread baking, and again, it was hot. Whew. <laughs> to Kelly and Jason Martin, fantastic, fantastic people. To Kathy Glazer, who miraculously ran our kitchen from afar. That was unbelievable. To Reverend Carol Duncan, who filled in for Bible story time and who made the feeding of the 5,000 happen in 2021. <laughs> to Tyrone Whiting, who is back here, who is a fantastic colleague and a great friend and who made choir camp happen, and it was just fabulous. To Jarrett, who hired me and has given... <laughs> Okay, uh, and who has given me quiet confidence in ministry again. To Barb, who is a living saint, a minister, a mentor. Not a saint. <laughs> to Gavin, who let us share his, his day with you. Thank you. <laughs> and 
last but certainly not least, to Elliot, to Emerson, to Pierce, to Anna, to Lucy, to Lily, to Sam, and to every single child who came this week and reminded me that the living bread from heaven is right in front of us. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm so blessed to know you all. And now I will say, amen. amen.